Aaliyah, first things first, thank you for coming on. It is an honor to have you. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? You know, I'm well. You know, I'm well. We could get into that, Aaliyah, but that's a whole other story. But anyway, listen, I want to start this off with a couple of icebreakers, like DB said, just to kind of get the flow going. First one, easy one. If you were to have your own talk show, we're talking like Oprah Winfrey show, primetime afternoon slot, who is your first guest? Oh, oh my goodness. Good question. I feel like I would probably have, I don't know, I want to say I would have Didi Bro on it. I feel like she's just so, she's just such an amazing person. She's very like outspoken. She's very like, she doesn't like really like hold back too much on like what's going on in her head. So I feel like it would be a really fun opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me ask you another question, Aaliyah. You ever do karaoke? I do. Yes. What is your go-to karaoke song? Okay. Okay. It's I Hope by Gabby. Oh, I forgot her last name, but Gabby, I think it starts with an A. Definitely got to throw that one in there for sure. All right. We'll sing it. No, I'm just kidding. We won't <laughs> hey, hey, I got to tell you, Randy, while you were gone, we we had a male guest who said he was going to sing uh, Taylor Swift. His, I mean, I told him, you know, I mean, you're going to get the crowd going. Oh, oh that's oh, that. Give you guys a little like one, two right now or? You know, on the, on the spot. I think it might have to be a little separate spot. I mean, I, I want to play you guys way too soon. Yeah. No, we Don't shut the episode her. down. <laughs> Listen, when DB's okay. done playing with his tracks, we'll get to the next. Oh. I was just trying to get into it a little bit. I'm seeing seeing the voice. He was actually vocals. trying to see if she would start singing. I know what he. Yeah. Was, I know what he I was mean, doing. <laughs> I'm here hey, for content. You're tempting me there. You're tempting yeah. me there. But but Randy, I know this is about Leah, but I gotta ask you because you weren't here. Like, are you okay with a guy choosing to go with T Swizzle? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Whatever pleases T- the crowd. T Swizzle knows no bounds. Big but listen, fan. big fan. Aaliyah, this is a, a question near and dear to my heart as a girl dad, two daughters, as a matter of fact. If yeah. you could be any Disney character, what Disney character would you be? I would want to be oh, good question I feel like I would want to be Elsa in the sense that like she just controls like ice and water and like that would be super cool to do you know yeah, I th- I, and she's I, also I, like a queen so it's like she like she she runs the program you know all right hey Queen Aaliyah I could get down with it <laughs> I could get down with it all right Aaliyah this is a little tougher question a little tougher okay. celebrity crush crush growing up or now Oh, um, Tom Holland. Well, that's a good Spider-Man. one. We share that actually. Anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We'll be good friends. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with Tom Holland. I mean, I yeah. might go Tom Hardy. He's you know it's kind of okay. the opposite. But hey, you know, hey, either one. Right. All all the Toms. <laughs> absolutely. All right. Last one before I turn you over to DB. Favorite athlete of all time, any sport. Favorite athlete of all time, any sport. I'd Besides say- yourself, Aaliyah. <laughs> I'd and do say, not and do not and do not say Haley Bryant or Kaya Johnson like they would say. <laughs> Dang it! My goodness, like does can it be a gymnast person or somebody else? It can be anybody you want. Okay, okay, I'd probably go with Michael Phelps just because like I kind of like grew up watching him and swim, and then the fact that he went to so many Olympics for so long of a time is mind blowing to me just i mean i've been doing my sport for a long time but that's that's just a whole different ball game the fact that that guy's arms are like nine (laughs) feet long is insane insane he was built to swim oh yeah absolutely so randy well before we carry on so i saw a swimmer um on the day an olympic guy i didn't even know who he was but i mean i feel like that's a requirement because he had those arms too like i mean like if you don't get gifted with those those long limbs you're not going to be a winner it's just the way it is big facts yeah he's he's just you, you look at his build and he's built differently but i guess he's built perfect for the water because the dude can just get after it i'm gotta be cheating or something you know <laughs> i'm not yeah. even, are we sure he's real I'm not <laughs> let's cut him open i think he might be metal metal <laughs> on the inside so. terminator yeah so Aaliyah, let's let's get down to business. Let's let's talk about you. Um, let's start at the beginning. You know, obviously, you've made your way to Baton Rouge now, but where did you grow up? Yeah, so I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. 
However, I was born in St. Louis, and then when I was five years old, we made the decision to move to Kansas City. I have three older sisters, and we all did gymnastics, and so we maybe moved to Kansas City for just a better gymnastics program to, you know, better our careers. Um, my older sister, Sarah Fingen, was also um, on the gymnastics team at LSU, and she had the aspirations to go to the Olympics. So we made the move over to Kansas City when I was five to for her to be able to train and then just for all of us to just better our careers in general. And so that's where I did most of my growing up. I went to a few different high schools. And I didn't school. I didn't know Kansas City was such a hotbed for gymnastics. Is that yeah. something that is like at an early age, like you just get into gymnastics and Kansas City is just like you kind of it's just breeds gymnasts or I, I have some some neighbors that are from Kansas City okay and they're not gymnastics people yeah but they're very nice and very sweet people but they don't talk about gymnastics but um, when you say that you, you talk about having three sisters and you talk about making the move there as though like we have to be there for a specific reason and this is the purpose why so I, I was just curious is it is it a hotbed for gymnastics not necessarily, but I mean, considering like the radius of St. Louis where I was born, Kansas City was the closest gym. There's a gym there called Great American Gymnastics Express. They bred Olympians, NCAA national champions. Like they have a great story behind them. And so it was, it was technically just the closest gym that created high level athletes. And so that's where we decided to go. Yeah, so. so with three sisters, what are the age differences? So my oldest sister is 29 and then my second oldest sister will be 27 in November. And then the one right above me, she just turned 22 and then I'm 20. So kind of, kind of a big range here. <laughs> so what, what was it like growing up with all girls? Was it fighting and hair pulling and drama or was it like, Loving, Hold up, man. You didn't just crazy. see the romper stomper video. Them girls ain't I, pulling hair no more, dog. They're throwing darts. I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to picture it. Like, I, I know we, we've we had, you know, male athletes come on and they're like, oh, yeah, it was like boys being boys all the time. Is that a thing with, with girls or is it like Brady Bunch style? Like you love each other and you're supportive and you're hugging I, and, and just being sweet to each other. I think that's definitely how it is now, just because we are all much older, but it was a very different story growing up. It was, it was a whole lot of like, that shirt's mine. Like you can't wear that. Where's my straightener? Where's my this thing? Or why are all my clothes gone missing all of a sudden? And so it definitely wasn't sunshines and rainbows all growing up. Of course, you know, we had our own girl problems, but I think the older we got, the more we realized we kind of just left that in the childhood. <laughs> I had the same fights with my sisters. Where is my straightener? Yeah. Where? You really need that on a daily. It's... You want me to go out? It's humid outside. You want me going out like this? That's why he's got that hat on. That's, that's right. So, uh, Aaliyah, you, you mentioned gymnastics. You guys moved to Kansas City to pursue gymnastics and to better your opportunities there. I'm making the assumption now because you, you make – that change that gymnastics is the only sport like that was what you dedicated all your time to yeah pretty much for the most part I think I did went to like three dance classes to try to do something different I think I did soccer for like one day and it just was not my thing but I it just kind of went in order of operations you know the oldest two sisters start off in gymnastics before I was born they actually got into it because my parents were looking up sports that were good for like brain development so things that can really kind of like click the right things in your brain and so I think swimming was one of them and then there was gymnastics of course and so that's kind of how they got started into it and then when the third one came along they just kind of plopped them right into the gym and then of course when I came it was just it was no brainer about what sport they were going to put me in your your, your mom was like do y'all you, do you babysit at this place yeah I, I, I got <laughs> I'm going to be having multiple kids. I just need a place for y'all just to hold on to them for a little bit. She says that it's a very expensive babysitting, you know? <laughs> I, I, I feel you. I feel you for sure. Um, 
so we talked to many gymnasts and they opt out of like a traditional schooling for homeschool. Um, and a lot of it is because of the, you know, demand and the rigor and just the pursuit for what it is that you're looking for with gymnastics. Um, so I'll ask you, what was your educational path? Was it a traditional path or was it more of like, you know, what we get with top level gymnasts that pursue homeschool and they need the time to train? Yeah, so I was actually homeschooled until about third grade. And then I just decided to go back to school. I went to school for only a half day in high school because I went to school from maybe like 7.45 to about noon and practice started at one. And then I was there all the way until seven. And I made the decision to go to school because I have such like an outgoing personality that I like needed to be around other people like constantly pretty much. And just like needed people who weren't gymnasts kind of just like a break from outside of the gym. And so like a lot of gymnasts do homeschool and sometimes like they don't even have the option to go to regular school, but thankfully how our gymnastic schedule worked out is, was we were, I was able to go to school in the morning and then have a little bit of a break before going to practice for the rest of the day. That's, that's crazy. Jim and Randy went to school half a day too in high school, but it, Rod never it, saw it, it, was, by, it was by choice. <laughs> I did well, not go to practice. As soon as lunch came, I was gone. It was gone. I'm the worst part was I had to come back for football practice. Golly. Yeah. Yeah. Jim and I had a class at the end of the day, and the teacher would be like, "Where's Jim?" And I was like, "Oh, he he just he's with the nurse." He ain't and, well. and to make it worse, I was still in second period with you, but I was asleep on the desk. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy, crazy. Oh, real academic school we went to. Absolutely. <laughs> so, give me give me kind of a summary of what that's like uh, during the day. Is it? Are you taking a full load of classes in the morning, and it's just? you crunch it all in or are you taking just the same amount of classes as everyone else? It's just, you have to go home later in the day and, and finish up the rest. How does that work? Yeah. So I went to a private school, which really like kind of helped work around my schedule. And so I took four or five classes in the morning and typically like a regular student had eight classes in a day. So I had five classes in the morning before going to practice. And typically I would do the other three, some sort of online version or like a homeschool version, I guess you could say as well, either during the year or during the summer and to just whenever I got it done or had the chance to do it. So, <laughs> so big question is how did, how did you do academically with that kind of schedule? <laughs> Honestly, I really don't know how I did it, but I actually did really well because it was just in such a routine and I really, I really didn't know anything else. And so I was just kind of in the routine of that's, that's just my life. That's what's normal to me. Maybe that should be the new trend. Maybe, maybe traditional schools to think like an old school way of thinking. It should be like half days and like, I don't know. Well, they're don't making know. kids go to school like year round almost now. Like summer break has gotten so short. It's crazy. And then I, I feel like my kids it. are never in school. There's a <laughs> break. There's a holiday. They got fall break. We didn't have no damn fall break. Randy, are your kids, because you're just across the state line, I don't know if it's like Mississippi thing, are your kids still doing periods or are they in blocks? So Taylor, uh, so instead of like six they, periods like we had, they got four blocks. So they do seven periods, but they don't do the same period. They don't do the same subject every day. They go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They'll have like math, English, whatever. And then Tuesday, when Tuesday, Thursday, they do like Spanish and wellness. Yeah, so literally we live like 25 minutes away from each other. They don't even do it the same. Yeah. Ours is blocked out into four and they only do one class each semester and then they switch it over the next. That is ridiculous. That's but enough about that. What about you? Yeah. Leah? What's your best subject? No, I'm just kidding. Ooh. Growing up, it was math, but I don't know if that's the same answer these days. What a loser. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, what a nerd, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. So, Aaliyah, you, you go to school part-time, and then you leave, you know, middle of the day, and you go train. So, obviously, with gymnastics, it's a little bit different than traditional sports because it's not affiliated with a school. So, you can't just be a part of the school team and, you know, work your way through there's there's a gym that you have to go to you have to train with and obviously you compete with what was the gym that you went to I went to it's called Great American Gymnastics Express and it's probably about maybe 15 minutes from where we moved to in Kansas City 
And it was, it was, it was a lot of time spent many, many years in there. (laughs) So what was, what was the benefit? Was it the fact that you got to train with good coaches? Was it the fact that you trained with high caliber uh, gymnasts? Was it the fact that you got to compete at high levels? Was it a combination of all that? What, what allowed you to excel and get to the level that you're at now? Yeah, I think it was really just the coaches. They have kind of a different way of like teaching gymnasts how to do certain skills. And so, you know, some people like they don't really like that style of coaching or some people do, but it really just fit for like me and how I wanted my sport to go. And I just started there at five years old. And so I really just kind of grew up in that facility and with these coaches that have known me for so long. And so I just I kept progressing with them. And then ultimately I made it to the highest level and now we're here. <laughs> let me, let me ask you this. This is, this is personal. All right. My daughter just does gymnastics and there are skills that I know that she can do, but her coach, like, I don't know what the philosophy is at this gym and it's a really good gym. Like I, I don't discredit what they're doing, but they don't like, if she's like, I don't want to do that. They don't make her do it when I know she can do it. I need them to push her. Can we say her her age for Aaliyah? Just put that out there. She's six. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that's old in gymnastics world. It really is. I mean, Randy, every one of these gymnasts started it too, bro. That's four years (laughs) in. Starting and then telling them you're going to do this. Look, I'm going to tell you what happened to my daughter when she was about nine, Aaliyah. They were telling her back handspring, back handspring, back handspring. She flipped over broke her arm in half like legit broke both whatever those two bones are called Sign so you trying to say it's on the coach is, is that where you're going with this no i'm just saying like <laughs> they're gonna do it when they do it bro all right so I'll, I'll give you an example and this is the big example is at home she can do like a back bend and she can kick over by okay. herself at home okay. with no like cheese mat or whatever like the little Rolly wheel like oh, that's mat. good that you know what that is. That was impressive. Hey, I, I've been. I look. I spent some dollars at this place. <laughs> I probably bought bought a few of those. So, I know she can do it by herself, but she'll go there and she'll make the coach help her every time. And the coach doesn't ever like go. You can do this on your own or try it on your own. But like I feel like I need to have a conversation with the coach. Like, stop enabling her. Like, make her do it because I know she can do it. Is the coach like asking her if she wants a spot or is like, I'm obviously she's six, but like, <laughs> or is she being like, Oh, like, can you come like spot me on this or something? I think she's saying, can I do it like this? And he's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, and she- of course she wants to do it the easy way. And I want her to do it the way that it needs to be done. Daniel, you I, I think for here. double the pay, you could probably but get him to make her do it. Here's the thing, Randy. He's sitting there asking that. This dude coached college baseball, and if any parent ever came to him and suggested that's, how they should that's coach, what he, I'm, would that's lose, where I'm he would torn. lose it. I would lose my mind. That's that's <laughs> different. That, Let me tell you something different. right now. You know, I've coached pretty high-level competitive travel <laughs> softball, and if one parent came to me, hey, you really, I'd be like, sit your ass. That's why you on that side of the fence. <laughs> All right, look. All right, I, I got it, it. I just call it using her resources. That's what all you say. I I will sit my that coach. So might as he well was, Randy. Him, he right? was just looking that Aaliyah would maybe give him the push to talk to his coach <laughs> and do what he really wants to. Do. <laughs> so so really, what I found out is I need to sit my happy ass up in the up in the the, the gallery and the watch. lookout. Yeah, the lookout. So all right, I got it. I got it guys have have said more than enough but i'll 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 end this part with this Aaliyah. obviously you are a high caliber athlete you start seeing that as you're progressing now at what point do you go i want to go to college or i want to take this to the next level what was the next level was it trying to compete for olympics or was it you know i just want to go to college Yeah, so in sixth grade, our family moved back to St. Louis for about nine months just because my dad had still worked in St. Louis. He was commuting all those years. And so for nine month period, we moved back to St. Louis and then we came back. And then I was just like, okay, well, like, I feel like I really like do have like what it takes to my goal was the Olympics and it was Olympics are bust, you know? 
And so I really made that decision to just like go full force at it. That's what I wanted to do. And back in like those days, they didn't really have an age where you could commit to a college. So eighth grade rolls around and I'm taking unofficial visits to colleges at a ripe age of 13. Um, I went out to UCLA to take a visit. And then obviously I knew about LSU. My sister had been going there. Um, And so in eighth grade, as a 14 year old, I committed to LSU. And so I just kind of closed that and stuck it in my back of pocket. And then I was just like, all right, Olympics or bust. And so when I was maybe a sophomore in high school, I finally made it to like, they call it the elite team. And then from there, you basically not like try out, but like you try to go for the U.S. national team. So sophomore year, I made it onto the U.S. national team. I was competing internationally and competing internationally, maybe like sophomore year of high school, junior year of high school. And then of course, COVID happened, which pushed back the Olympics. I was still training all that time. I did have a injury setback. So I did have surgery on my foot during the whole Corona outbreak in that break. So during that time, not only was I trapped in my house, but I was also like trying to recover from this like big surgery that I had. And my senior year of high school was around. I'm really trying to go for the Olympics. And I, it was like the competition before Olympic trials. So like the trials for the trials, I guess you could call it. And I had the worst meet of my life. I was falling on every single event. Like it was just not my day. And ultimately I didn't end up making it to Olympic trials. So that kind of put that season of my life away. And at that time, of course, I've graduated high school and I'm attending LSU in the fall. And next thing I know, here I am as a junior. So here's the one thing I did hear from all that, Jim, Randy, she took an official visit at 13. So my daughter is halfway to this, this, she's halfway to making college visits. Like we need to start, I got to go talk to this coach. They, they changed that rule. So you actually can't do that anymore. And you can't like can't. go. Yeah, He actually can't. knows that he's just teasing. Daniel, let me tell you what you would tell a parent. You need to have a talk with your daughter, bro. It don't need to be with the coach. Yeah. Go wake her up right now. Bring on the podcast. All right. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, so let's let's get into this. Let's get down to Baton Rouge. You know, uh, first day on campus, you know, I've been in your facilities. When you just walk into the practice facility, like, I'm in awe, okay? Like, it's better than a lot of people's regular facility. You look over at the, you know, trophies that are in the trophy case for national championships and SEC championships. Like, so when you get there, and it's real, I mean, you're familiar with LSU, obviously, but you're now a gymnast there. What are the emotions? It was just so surreal considering the fact that I just had been committed to LSU for so long and for so long it was just like oh like I'm gonna go to LSU I'm gonna go to LSU and now I'm like oh I'm like I'm here now like this is my life now like this is the facility that I get to just walk in on every given day like they actually give me the keys to this place like it's it's a palace and it's just so beautiful and I'm really just grateful to be able to just be there every single day. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's next level. And so with next level, you know, the practices are next level, you know, coming from where you were when you start doing practicing with LSU, like, I mean, was it a whole nother tier? Oh, yeah. And I think college athletics is just a whole different ball game from what I was used to just considering like, OK, like our hours might be less. Yeah, I'm going from 30 hours in the gym to all of a sudden now it's only 20. But then it just such it takes a toll on you. Like emotionally, mentally, now you have you're in college and you have like real grades that really matter. And it's just all of these different things that are pulling at you that you never really thought of coming into a school like LSU. And so it was there was a lot of emotions happening at the same time. It was just very different from what I was used to. And that's just something I had to adjust to when I got here. So do you feel like with, you know, between what was required for gymnastics and academics, do you feel like you were adequately prepared, you think? I do, considering I had gone to, I I went to a very small private high school growing up. And so like just coming to this big university was, that was like a really big change for me. And I really didn't know what to expect. I was just really excited to just kind of get my foot in the door of like, this is your life now. It's what you have to adjust to. Um, But I think overall, I was pretty adequately prepared. I thankfully had my sister who had been through the ropes she's been through all of it and so she was able to kind of be like a really big guide for me to kind of figure out like this is what you can do this is what you probably shouldn't do some days and so it was it was a great leader to follow 
So let's get into it. On your freshman year, on January 28th, um, you scored a 9.8 and 7.5 on the beam. Um, you know, first of all, we have a lot of baseball guests on here. And, you know, a lot of people say the hardest thing to do in sports is hit a baseball. After being to numerous gymnastics events now, I the hardest thing to do in sports is the beam, uh, period. Like, I won't even hear anybody debate me otherwise. And so with that, what are the nerves like, you know, was it another day at the office or, you know, you're going against Georgia and you're on the beam? What's it like? It was just such a surreal moment, especially the Georgia atmosphere was such a crazy environment to be for my first collegiate meet that I had been to. There were meets pr uh, prior to that one, but I was down with COVID, so I actually missed the meets prior to that one. And so it was just, just the environment was insane, but I really just, I had a lot of competitive experience just growing up in the gym that I went to and the competitions that I went to, but it was, it's really different stepping into a collegiate atmosphere because it's very loud, very noisy. The people in the stands try to distract you. And so I really just try to think of it, like you said, just like another day in the office. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, in that season, you set career highs of 9.85 on the bars, 9.925 on the beam, and 9.925 on the floor. Um, Randy doesn't get to, to watch as much, but me and Daniel try to watch every meet. And so we know that those scores are significant, especially when you're a part of a team because every every member counts. Um, you know, So to be able to come in as a freshman and have such, such success, did you see yourself being able to contribute like that out the gate? I really just wanted to – just kind of like take a look around of what was going on freshman year, you know, obviously I wanted to help out in any aspect that I meant. And I was really able, I was really grateful for the opportunity to kind of be a, a consistent tribute to the beam lineup and the floor lineup. And so really just grateful for the opportunity. I really didn't set too high of standards. Honestly, I was really just happy to be there. <laughs> I understand. And so, you know, all, when we talk about the 9.925 on beam, you know, doing that at the SEC championships, you know, um, you said this was COVID season. So I know things were different, but nonetheless, like it's the best of the best, like SEC championships. Like does any is is it still, you know, we're talking about Georgia. Was it just business? But now you look like in the SEC championships. Is there even more pressure? Um, I mean, a little bit. Obviously, the stakes are higher and. You know, we have goals that we want to when we step out for a meet like SECs compared to just like another team such as like Georgia or Alabama or those types of teams because there is an end goal. Um, but I mean, it, I really try to not make it too complicated. It's like the end of the day. It's really just gymnastics, like how it is plain and simple. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who's not just another team, because um, obviously, like I said, we watch and we're very familiar and Utah is not uh, just another normal team. But you managed to hit your career high on floor and the Tigers, uh, as I said, you know, important that it's a it's a team thing. Obviously, we're putting emphasis on you, but you contributed in and what was win over number four, Utah. You know, what was it like having a career day and being a part of the team for that moment to be able to beat a prestigious uh, team like Utah? It was it was such a surreal experience, especially being in the PMAC, I think it was almost a sold out crowd that night. And especially because we we did know who we were going up against and we we wanted that win really bad. And I don't think we necessarily changed anything. It was just the atmosphere, the environment. It's like we were just we were we were on lock that night. Let me let me ask you, you know, I haven't been to gymnastics anywhere else. All the meets I go to are at LSU, but I I watch on TV, obviously, and just from a TV perspective none of them seem to really match with the PMAC. I don't think I'm being a homer as an LSU fan. Is, is there is there any that you've competed at that match, especially a sold-out crowd at the PMAC? Oh, goodness. Well, I'm biased, so I can't really say that. I mean, I feel like, look, when I went, and we're going to obviously get to that season, but, like, I'm just going to go ahead and put it. When I went to the top ten matchup between y'all and Auburn when Suni Lee came, that, what, that place was electric. Like I, I would put it, it didn't even have to be gymnastics. I would have put that with any best day at Alex box. Like that place was crazy. And so I don't think, I don't think you're being biased and I don't think I'm being a homer. I don't think anybody matches the, the PMAC just keeping it honest. And I, and I know that's because gymnastics is y'all feed so much off the energy of the crowd, especially like when you're doing the floor routines, right? Like and everybody's oh, yeah. clapping and with y'all. So it's just <laughs> next level. Oh, yeah, so it's great. Definitely, it's definitely surreal. You guys, we start um January fifth, I believe. So 
Oh, I'll be there. Believe it. So, you know, to put a to put a bow on freshman season, you know, some have expectations, some don't. We talk about all the things that happen, you know, who your team is able to beat, what you were able to accomplish is, you know, um, your your season highs. Do you feel like you met your own personal expectations you had set for yourself? I mean, I feel like my expectation for myself was just to contribute and to that aspect. I did achieve that. However, you know, I obviously have higher expectations such as like competing as much as I can or just like certain like team goals that unfortunately we weren't able to hit that freshman year. But I think it just kind of fueled us into the next season. Yeah, Emma Kelly put a lot of emphasis on that last episode, you know, talking about the team aspect. And and we've obviously had Kai, Alana, Shay Campbell all say the same thing. Gymnasts are different. Um, you know, everything's a team game, but you know, even though you're just one person, it's you know, it's everybody's got in order to win a, a meet, everybody's really gotta be on. Like, and so it, it's yeah. probably as as big of a team deal as is any, right? You know, obviously one score can be wiped off, but aside from that, like I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all are basically allowed one mistake. Outside of that, everybody's got to be, you know, on top of things. But sophomore season, um, you know, no injury, no COVID. Um, you competed in all but one meet for the Tigers. Um, you know, explain to the audience just how hard it is. You know, because we talk about just how hard, difficult gymnastics is to do in general. But every single week competing in these meets, doing multiple different events, um, just the wear and tear it puts on your body throughout an entire season. Yeah, absolutely. It was definitely a whole different ball game, especially going from freshman year where I was only doing two events every single week. And obviously, like that also is a toll on your body. But just to go from two events to four events and just growing up, what I'm used to is like competition and then maybe three months later another competition and then a month and then another one and so to go from like such a widespread to just back to back to back you really have to like push on like taking care of your body and like taking care of your health or else it's it's not gonna last (laughs) yeah so like you know I've never actually taught you know obviously I know Kai and Alana real well oh and I didn't even mention we had KJ on here do y'all have like a uh a big nutrition like meal plan that helps like take care of your body y'all have somebody that does that for y'all we do have a nutritionist that works with our team as well as our trainer um it's there's not necessarily like a specific like you have to eat this this and this and you can't eat this and because that's like a terrible mindset when it comes to food so it's just like you know it's best to feel your body it's up to you if you want to make that decision or not so let, let me let me ask you this how many rain storms do you drink a day or in a week? Just a day. <laughs> I I probably go with one. A little little coffee in the morning, rainstorm in the afternoon type game. How many how many bowls of oatmeal do you eat a week with blueberries, bananas, peanut butter, honey, oat milk, chocolate mm-hmm. chips? I Did I get salt. it? You almost forgot salt. The salt. What? How are you gonna how are you gonna put salt in it? It's literally you just. But then, then <laughs> use peanut butter that says specifically no salt added. Okay, okay, okay. You just, it's just got to add a little bit of kick. You can't have it too sweet. You got to have the balance to it. it makes so, all the difference. Probably. So you, you lost me at the rainstorm thing. Is that a like? Is that a gymnastics drink? I don't know about it. Randy, you familiar? Like, oh yeah. Uh, no, if you if you if you scroll through sh- socials, you'll see she she talks about her favorite breakfast, and then there's multiple I think she's sponsored. Multiple posts that I feel like she's sponsored by Rainstorm, which is like, a, I don't know, it's like a Celsius type energy yeah, drink. Yeah, it's an energy drink. So. If not, NIL. Aaliyah's NIL. Gone. Rain. We got we got your person right here. Aaliyah Finnegan is, is your, your go-to athlete. Rainstorm. Nice well, well yeah, while we're just doing the NIL connects, I cannot wait now that she's been a guest on the show to put her over there next to Kaya and KJ for my athletic collection. LSU gymnastics poster. So get your athletic collection poster of Aaliyah. But moving on. All right. So you recorded perfect scores on three events this past year in four consecutive weeks. You earned your first perfect 10 on floor against number 17, Georgia. Um, you know, just talk about what that was like getting that crown. It was such a surreal experience, especially just growing up. I've never like experienced like some people will get like perfect tens growing up, but I've never experienced anything like that. And honestly, I was really shocked that it just was happening so quick. Like 
I don't know if you, there's a video and I'm thinking I'm like crying almost because like all my team was just surrounding me and hyping me up. And it was, it was a really special moment. All right, Daniel, you set me up for failure here against number five, Auburn. You earned a perfect score on your say it, Daniel. I I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to look stupid on this show. What kind of vault is that? Well, they're oh, sure. a what? <laughs> That's what it says in the the the, the old bio. Me, the mo, old million chick. <laughs> I think it's pronounced Omelia check, but honestly, I couldn't really tell you because we don't really use two fancy words of that. Obviously, that's like the name of the scale, but you can just call it like fault or like what I call it is like a half on pike. Well, off, he so he like, put that in here I'm on purpose. It, really. he, <laughs> you know, he did that on look. Normally, I write a lot of these things. He wrote this one. And he put that in there and made me have to say that on purpose. And now it really shows that I skip class all the time in high school because I'm, I I'm, a, I'm official. I I'm 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 dedicated to the craft. I want to make sure I get the terms well, right. I couldn't enunciate it, but nonetheless, you you got a perfect score against Auburn with that. Um, 9.875 on bars, 9.95 on beam, and a 9.97 on floor to match a career high, 39.80 in the all around. You know, um, what was it like that day? And you know, since I I admitted that Daniel wrote this question, you know, was breakfast different? Did you have those special <laughs> pancakes? It was two rains, two <laughs> rainstorms, just the right one. amount of salt. <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing different. I mean it wasn't even off to a great start or anything. Like I hit my bar team, like I knew how to do. And then the rest just kind of followed. And I really just followed our team's energy. And ultimately we ended up taking the loss against Auburn. But I think just looking into specific highlights that our team had throughout the meet, I mean, I would call it a win. <laughs> well, you may have lost to Auburn, but you didn't lose to the school that Aaliyah, you're not going to probably be aware of this, but we've interviewed athletes from like 60 plus schools now. We refuse to interview anyone from Florida, um, even though I did say if Trinity Thomas ever wanted to come over here, on here, I would make, you know, an exception. Great Great but job. nonetheless, you have no problem beating and own in Florida as you had a, a perfect 10 on beam. And as I said, beam being what I feel like is the hardest. So against number two, Florida, you know, uh, you know, what's it feel like, you know, being able to beat them? And then, I mean, another 10 on a different skill. I think we just really went in there kind of like an underdog mentality, especially because we know how good Florida is and their team is awesome. Like the girls individually, like we love them and, you know, we're all good friends. Of course, when you go out to the floor, it's a little bit different. Um, but we really just, we, we knew what we wanted to get done and we, we got it done. <laughs> So let's let's focus on the team aspect for a second, because, you know, as I'm talking about these wins, I actually, you know, I kind of skipped over something as, you know, I remember, I'll be honest with you, Leah, Daniel can tell you, I don't think I've, because I'm very close to Kaya, I consider Kaya family, um, um, she's been a four-time guest in the show, my wife's even, you know, done paintings for her, she uh, sends messages to my daughter constantly as a role model, and when she went down, in that second meet, it was the second meet, right? It wasn't the first. Yeah, it was the second. Yeah. And when she went down, like, I had to fight back, like, holding tears because, like, like my – I immediately went pessimistic, right? I was like, worst case scenario, I was like, season's over. I wonder if her career's over with it being her second Achilles. And, you know, and then the next couple meets, I ended up – I went and watched y'all at home against Oklahoma, and it just – it felt like y'all weren't there yet. Like it, it really could tell what it took uh, the toll it took on the team. Right. And so then fast forward to when we're sitting here talking about, you know, Florida and, and these key victories, you know, just how hard was it for y'all to be able to regain yourself? Um, you lose a key, key piece and a leader um, and be able to, and then obviously you go against, the best in Oklahoma and that's tough as it is to be able to regain yourselves and get back on track yeah I think that was definitely probably the most mentally exhausting weekends probably for a lot of us we could say the same thing just because that Kentucky me you know it was it took a toll on all of us and it really like I've never been so mentally tested in that very moment to just like finish the meet and just you know kind of get out of there as fast as possible and then to just turn around to Monday to compete against the number one team in the country we had a little get together you know that day after Kai kind of said some words to us said some words to the team and we we really just 
rallied around Kaya and we rallied around the team and we, the season wasn't over yet. We couldn't just like lay down and not do anything about it. You know, we still had all of these teams that were going up next. And so we just, we kind of had to switch our mindset a little bit to just, you know, do it for the people who can't, or just like stay together. Cause that's really the only way we were going to survive. <laughs> yeah. And I really think I learned the, the family aspect of the team that day, because after that happened, um, Kai Rivers is like the first one to come to mind, but multiple girls just, you know, having mistakes that they don't typically make. And just the look on all y'all's faces, because gymnastics is a sport where you're always smiling. And there wasn't just smiles and there were mistakes being made. And it really showed, you know, a family member went down and it just showed the whole effect. And so while that's obviously a negative, she got hurt. It was a positive spin to me to think about just how close y'all are as a team, as, as a unit. And so, and that it would affect y'all so much, you know, football guys, right? Like, you know, guy gets limping off the field, whatever, get out of the way. We got to play ball. Like, you know what I mean? But not, not with y'all. Um, so, uh, but it was, it was really great to see the way y'all bounce back. Like I said, um, you know, I watched y'all against Oklahoma and I'll tell you this, I, I got to ask you this question. What's with their boring floor music, Aaliyah? You look, you laughed, you laughed, because you, I'm telling you, LSU brings it. Randy, Randy is somebody who doesn't go, he would be in there jamming. Like their music was boring. Hey, to, to each their own. I'm not, I'm not going to make a comment about that, but I just, I'm very She's happy got friends on Oklahoma. <laughs> She's not going to do it. I, I, I am very pleased with how LSU does our floor teens and I enjoy them very much. <laughs> I try to see if you take the bait anyway. It, I, I know I don't, I don't have to have you tell me, but anyway, they, nonetheless, they're amazing gymnasts. They're just not as fun. <laughs> um, but, you know, moving on back to your individual accomplishments, um, getting down to the end of the season, you match your bars career high against West Virginia in the NCAA championship semifinals. Um, you know, talk to us about that. Also, you know, just, ranked as a one of the top 10 floor performers in the country for five consecutive weeks in that same span just everything was clicking right um you know I don't know what it's like to be a gymnast but I know you know uh, through other sports like is it the same kind of thing like one, when you're in a groove like it just feels like you can just do anything yeah I think gymnastics is a very like repetitive sport I guess you could say and it's we do the same things every single day and so nothing nothing too crazy really changes you just have to tap into kind of just what we've done every day in practice and then in the competitions as well. Yeah. So you obviously earned uh, all SEC honors on the floor after finishing the top two at the SEC championship. So congratulations named a WCGA regular season, all American on beam floor and all around um, in your NCAA championships debut, you recorded a floor score of 9.9625 in the semifinals to tie the highest score on the event by an LSU gymnast at the championships uh, placed first on floor, third on bars, and third in the all-around in the first session of the NCAA championship semifinals, earning All-American honors and moving move your career total to six for the year. You know, um, I keep asking you about stages, and I know I feel like it, but all right, we talked about SEC, you know, uh, being on the road. We've talked about being at home in PMAC, but when you are in the NCAA champion stage, championship stage, it's got to be feeling a little bit different then. Oh yeah, I think it's a whole different ball game, and especially because I didn't get to experience that my freshman year, and so just stepping into it. Obviously, I've seen it from the stands or on TV, but just to be there in person competing, it was so surreal. The environment, just the atmosphere of the whole thing, it was it was a phenomenal experience. Well, last question, and then I'll let Daniel uh, talk to you about the upcoming season. And and I've obviously told you, um, you know, you can plug this later, but. For anybody listening, go watch the climb because this season was a climb and, and that's where I want to get to. Obviously, y'all came up short in the final four, but if you just look at the way the season started, um, I don't think that most people would have put you there, just being honest. So the fact that y'all grinded and y'all came together as a team and y'all made that climb and you made it there. Um, I mean, I saw y'all's faces. There was no look of devastation after that loss. Y'all were very proud of what y'all had accomplished so you know did the season with the way that I mean did it meet expectations personally and did it meet as a team and did you did y'all feel very accomplished as it seemed y'all did 
Absolutely. I think there was nothing to be um, down about, especially during the, during the season, it was such like an emotional roller coaster, even from the first meet from Utah to Kentucky. And then all the way down to the national champions, there was like a lot. And, you know, you can see more of that watching the climb on LSU gold, but it kind of takes you into a little in depth of that. And it just, just making it to the final four. Honestly, I don't want to say that we were just happy to be there because no one handed us anything. Nobody was just like, Oh, like you guys have been through so much. Like, here's this ticket to the NCAA. It's like, no, that's not how it worked. But we, we proved that we deserve to be there and we earned our way to that. And I think we had everything to be proud of. So that leads us into where we're at currently getting prepared for a, a new season. Obviously, you want to celebrate what you guys were able to accomplish. But re the reality is, is none of that matters because it's all new. Everybody's got a blank slate. So for you personally, this isn't a team – this isn't team yet, but just for you, what are, what is your, your personal goal for the upcoming season? I think my, it's hard to make personal goals. I think for my personal goal, it's really to just, like I said, help the team in any way I can and just go out there and hit because that's honestly the biggest thing that you can do like for myself and for the team is just to hit your teens like you know how to do and then just where that takes us that's where we'll what go. she really wanted to say was a perfect 40 daniel <laughs> i really try not to be score based I really do <laughs> well you're gonna hit a 40 just because we said it is happening <laughs> so then on the flip side is all right what is the team's goal is it to win a national championship is it to get back and put yourself in a position to win a national championship I think we all know that we want to win a national championship. I think every single person on the team, we have that collective goal. And especially for those who were on the team last year, we kind of got like a little taste of it. Like, oh, like this is what it's like, you know, like being in the final four because in the past two years, we haven't exactly got that experience. And so we got there, we got the taste of it. And I think we're hungry for more. And we want you it see, all. Yes. Big guns. Hey, <laughs> why, why not? Why not? So have you been seeing that, Daniel? Let me ask you, have you been seeing the videos of Kai? I'm amazed with Kai's progress so fast. Oh, absolutely. And especially I wasn't here the whole summer. Like I, I left in May to go home and then I wasn't back until August and just seeing how I left her out in May and then where she is now, I could not be more proud of her resilience. She's, she's ready. She's going to get after it. I mean, you all are. I mean, I, I think a healthy, a healthy team's going to, going to set you guys up for a special season but you know given the names and the people that we've talked about just in this episode give me somebody we haven't talked about give me a newcomer that we need to know about oh there's so many <laughs> we have a couple we have we have seven new faces you know going in coming in this year and so i think you guys will also be really impressed with cammy because she came last year and Unfortunately, she wasn't able to make her LSU debut, and I think you guys are going to be really, really excited to see her out there. What Can't about what about what about the the girl who traded on Florida to come to LSU? I'm a fan of that all within itself because we're not a Florida Florida fan. So I hope she comes in and just drops ten after ten for LSU after leaving. Oh, she, Florida. Is, she is awesome, incredible person inside and out, and she just she's such a hard worker, and she's really just so happy to. So happy to be here, you know, kind of a fresh start for her. So I'm really excited to be here with her. So let's say hypothetically, you guys hoist a national championship. What can you say was the one thing that contributed to that? Is there any one thing? Is it one thing that you did specifically? Was it one thing that the team worked on specifically? Or was it just everybody was healthy and they went out and they were just locked in. Well, I mean, I think that being healthy does help, but we kind of saw last year that like it only takes six. And in some cases it only takes five. And so as long as all oh, there's, there's 23 girls on the team this year, as long as 23 girls are on the same page, we're locked in. We have the same goal. I think we're going to be unstoppable. And I think, uh, I think we need to give a, you know, salute to Jay Clark. I mean, I, I watch him every meet with y'all whether it's in person I, the 
I love the way he works with y'all because all coaches are different and we watch the other teams. The chemistry he has with you girls is, uh, you know, it's underappreciated, I think, probably. I think the coaching staff as a whole, outside of him as well, I mean, I see a lot of coaching happening outside of the head coach a lot. Absolutely. Especially, like, when you when you see the streams, like, I think I see more of coaching happening with the assistants than I do the head coach. I think each of them kind of really play a special role because they all have their own events technically. And, you know, obviously Jay is the head coach, but I also think that he understands that like the assistant coaches, they do have their own specialties that they have that sometimes Jay doesn't and vice versa. And so it's, 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 it all just works together in that way. <laughs> Aaliyah, we're going to put a bow on this thing. We're about to score a 10 on our floor routine. So check this out. We're going to play a little game. It's called this or that. The rules are simple. I'm going to give you a couple options. You cannot pick neither, and you can't pick both. Are you down? I'm ready. All right, so this or that is also brought to you by, we brought them up earlier, the athletic collection. So please buy things from the athletic collection because it goes directly to help these star athletes like Aaliyah Finnegan. Soon to be. Oh. So check this out. First things first, Aaliyah, and don't give us the answer you gave us earlier. I want to know, breakfast for breakfast or breakfast for dinner? Oh, breakfast for dinner, definitely. I really hate that answer. Though. I love that answer. I, I do. I don't. Rare, I rarely eat breakfast for breakfast. It's always dinner. It's this, better as dinner. This this isn't a this or that question, but I, I'm I'm curious, Jim. When you get an Aaliyah Finnegan athletic collection poster, are you going to slide that Joe Bear poster over and that Tommy Tanks poster over and, and slap it up right there, right behind you? Or, or where, where is Aaliyah going to go? No, i got a gymnastics wall. She'll go over there with Kai and KJ. But just, look, just for, to give you the fun you were looking for, I would never move Joe Bear for anybody, but I will move the tank for Aaliyah. <laughs> Wow, wow, so honored. <laughs> Joe, Joe Bear's my guy. Like, I'm mad that he didn't come back for another year. He should have, just so I could call Joe Bombs all day. <laughs> all right, Aaliyah, you're having breakfast for dinner. What's the go-to breakfast food? Oatmeal. Holly. Oh, and then she, said, she got me with dinner and then says, that I'm bacon and eggs. Like, what are we doing here? Sorry. I mean, she puts a lot in her oatmeal. I mean, it's, it's a lot it's going pretty, on. It's a pretty man. heavy, heavy it's oatmeal. It's not like those like microwave packets oatmeal. Like you just throw some water in there and stick it in there. Like this is like handcrafted oatmeal, like made with love. <laughs> Makes it taste better. Daniel, I got a question Insult. for you. I'm going to out myself right here, but I just, I can't help it. If I have Waffle House in Baton Rouge like I did the last time at 2 a.m., does it count as dinner or for breakfast? It's um, breakfast. That's morning breakfast, time. homie. And... <laughs> Better clear clear your schedule. You yeah. need some bathroom time, bro. Alrighty then, back to this, Aaliyah. Next question: More fun, LSU football or LSU baseball? Atmosphere. Mm, atmosphere wise. Yeah, I mean, and why is it football? Just tell me. I'm just curious. Well, because you can't you can't beat out Death Valley. Like, I love LSU baseball as much as anybody, but like, you can't beat a. Game in Death Valley, but you know when you said atmosphere, it changed for. I feel like when you were just going yeah. to sport to sport, I feel like it was going to be baseball. Was it? Maybe. No, I don't think it was. <laughs> then you said atmosphere, and I had to change it. Sorry. I understand. It's hard to compete. Although I've been to Alex Box, uh, I've been to a game in Death Valley uh, years ago. We actually had like 15 men on the fan. I'm a Tennessee fan. Don't hold that against me, Ali. We're still friends. He came and watched Tennessee lose this year in the box. So shout out. To I Ray did. To watch Too that. bad I didn't make the football game. How'd that turn out? Mm. Well, listen, so on to the next <laughs> question. If you were left on an island but had the choice of being alone or taking your worst enemy, and I don't even think you have enemies, which would you choose? Wait, being left alone or is that Or like you're there with your worst enemy? Either all alone or with your worst enemy. Well, considering the fact that I don't really have a worst enemy, I, I would pick that, that one because then at least I have a buddy. Maybe I could turn well, them into a friend. <laughs> oh my God. She just, I was fixing to say it and then she said it, DB. She said word for word. Emma Kelly said, I would want my worst enemy because I would make them my best friend. <laughs> oh my God. 
<laughs> At least you didn't say what Griffin Herring from LSU said. I'm calling him out every episode for the rest of the season. Better, he, he deserves it. He he said, and and you should have seen the, you should have seen the look on Gavin Gidry's face. Like he like I don't know if he feels comfortable around his team anymore. He said, "Well, you know, I started thinking about it, and I'd want to have someone there with me because you know, if desperate times came out and you got hungry, you may have to eat them." And we were like, "That's true." I'm gonna um, tell you right now, if the airplane is going down, that's a little too down, honest. But that's a little too honest, Randy. That's just an not, answer you I'm keep to yourself. Uh, if the airplane starts going down, I'm putting hot sauce on DB engine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we, we about to just get to it. I'm not gonna be hungry. Well, well I, I, I wouldn't. We we even got we even went further into the we went deep into this this question. All right, so if that's the case, Randy, mm-hmm. like. What are you? What are you eating first? Like, are you? Just oh, your like, thighs, big dog. But you're <laughs> you're gonna go right in. You're not gonna like. No. Like, you're not gonna take like a finger and like try and it, it out. And this is like, no hey, longer. Hey, this is no longer a family show. It's a can Listen. of weirdo show. We have lost. We have lost base. <laughs> Aaliyah, Aaliyah, come. Let's come back. Let's come back. All right, let's come all right. back. You can only pick one, right? You got to have a yacht or a private jet. Which yeah, one you pick? No, y'all like how you just said yacht. You need to say massive yacht like we normally do. Don't don't shortcut not, that look, yacht. I, I feel like every look, Aaliyah's energy is so positive. Like she she knows it's massive. Yeah, I think y'all are disappointed that four out of the last five have been yacht because y'all are jet guys. No, why why do you gotta say massive yacht? I mean it's a yacht. It's a, it's, yacht. It's a boat if it's yeah, we, not a we massive know it's one. a big is boat. the private jet massive too, or is it only the yacht though? Both are huge. We're talking okay, huge. I have to go with the jet then. Of course you do. Of course you do, Leah, because you got the right answer. I'm a traveler, you know. I like I like to make I like to go to places a quick amount of time. Where's the first okay. place you're going? Yeah, where are you gonna go? Is it Turks and Caicos? What are we talking here? Mm, ooh. The rain the, the rainstorm plant. Uh, <laughs> pick up her, her allotment. The headquarters, actually. Yeah. Gotta pick up a new supply. Um, ooh, I'd probably say Bora Bora because I've never been and I really want to go. <laughs> Okay, so you you would go to a beach though, like that's where you're trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I could park my I could park my yacht on that beach. I'm just saying. It's oh, yeah, a I would be able to be there longer, and then by the time you finally got there, I'd have my time, and then that's true. On to the next. That is true. You ever been on a cruise ship? <laughs> they do not move fast. <laughs> but listen, if best beach you've ever been to, you've never been to Bora Bora. What's the best one you've ever been to? And and don't say somewhere in Louisiana. Oh, oh my goodness, this is so hard for me. <sighs> Bro, have you been to Louisiana beaches since you actually had to say that to her? Uh, <laughs> yes, that's why I said please don't say anything like that. Oh my goodness, it's so hard. Um, I want to say, oh my goodness, probably. Well, suddenly I forgot every single beach I've ever been to. <laughs> I've never been to a beach actually. <laughs> Beach. What is this beach you speak of? I just recently went to. It was a black sand beach in what? Um, it was in. It was in. I think we were in Italy. I think. Whoa! That so, now DB is a fan for life. <laughs> so yeah, I probably I, just because it was just different. Like I've never been to a black sand beach before. Randy, I didn't really expect, but I had a great time. Randy, will we ever make it to Europe like Daniel and Aaliyah? Or are we just stuck uh, here forever? I have no desire to go there. I, I think it's great for you guys, though. I think it's great. <laughs> you're, missing out. You're, you're missing out. Yes. We're, we're very cultured. I have very, desire to go there. I'm very not, that's worldly really, people. I don't have I have to the same now, actually. So I mean, it's not like I couldn't. I just choose not to. Listen, but listen, we're getting back to Aaliyah here. You got to get rid of one of these things forever, Aaliyah. And I, I should turn this into your drink, but I'm not. You got to get rid of ice cream or cookies. Which one are we getting rid of? Ice cream. Sorry. Are you, are you like a communist? What is you wrong? Can't with you? be just like a warm cookie. All right, what kind of cookie now? Hold up. Yeah, uh, this matters. If you say oatmeal raisin, I'm going. No, you off here. no like, macadamia nuts. <laughs> like you can't go wrong. Just like a like a warm like chocolate chip cookie. Or right. if you want to go crazy, you could have an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. Mm. I really raisin. love oatmeal. Like oatmeal is your that's like your jam. <laughs> that's basically what her breakfast is. She has oatmeal just, and then I puts just, chocolate chips. I just in. know I'm thinking of an oatmeal cookie. You I know I'm just thinking it. about one of them cinnamon toast cinnamon toast insomnia cookies right now. That's what I want. Mm. Man. See, those cookies are doing too much for me. But <laughs> this is the question that's like I'm gonna judge you on. You've been so positive. You don't have enemies. Energy's been off the charts. 
But now I'm gonna know what kind of person you are, Leah. And if you answer, if you lie to me, I'm gonna know because, like, you know, I'm old and I got a lot of kids. Win a million dollars or an LSU national championship? An LSU national championship, and then we just get a million dollars. Obviously, is I mean that? Did you not listen to the rules of the show? Oh, uh, right. There's right. no picking either. So you're picking Natty. Yes. Is that because, like, for the greater good, like everybody gets that? But you like, if you got a million to get a million dollars, like you only, I only get two more chances of this thing. Okay. I just, I, okay. I just know. Look, when Gavin Gidry said, "I would take this ring on my finger all day, every million," I really wish we had a million dollars in a duffel bag and set it on the table next to the ring and see if he'd really go that route. I don't believe these athletes. I, yeah, they don't have a million dollars in cash right in front of them to really just have to think about. Yeah. Okay. All right. All There's right, nothing right. to we think gotta, about. We got to find a sponsor. No, we got to find a sponsor who's willing to put a million dollars on the table in front I'm, of it so we can find out. I'm up in the ante, Alia. You know, I, obviously, you got a lot of sisters, the family. Every, it's all beautiful, right? $100 million or Natty. But I feel like I, I can't change my answer now. All right. Oh, I respect yeah. it. He I respect it. Because price on a national championship. Like, that's like. Oh, you I can. Easily. You could. Easily. 100 million? Oh. The, the, hey, 100, let me tell you, let me tell you something, Leah. They're teasing you because every athlete that has won a national championship has came on here and they say exactly what you said. It's priceless and you can't change the feeling that they had. And I wish I had that feeling, too. So I'm going to I'm going to say you're probably right on this. Thank you think that you know what you might be right because like austin riley i mean how do you like that's the only one i can say the dude's got 300 million and a world series which would he take he's got both i think he i think he would take the ring for sure because he doesn't really care about money then he wouldn't have signed for 350 million dollars he signed for about 150 million less than what was the going rate we're not gonna you know what i love one year one year early he was one year early. He wasn't eligible for any of that money, and he still signed it because you know his what? Agent said you we set get the money. record this episode for getting off topic more than you ever have. Get back on topic, sir. Okay. Well, All now right. we know that Aaliyah is taking the natty. She has no enemies. She, she's getting one this year, dude, and I'm gonna That's be there I'm for it. I'm gonna be there for Daniel. If they make it to the finals, to the national championship, will you hey. bring your wife and daughter? I like how she said when. When they make it, are you bringing the wife and daughter? Because this is now uh, something I, I that was, your family is into. Yeah, so here's the deal. Nobody ever presented me the opportunity of taking a million dollars or a national championship because if they did, I would have took a million dollars and I would say, of course I would be there. I would have all the money to do Wait, that. Wait, also somebody that has a national championship, right? Yes, he, he, does it, he does have a national championship as a coach. This is true. All right. Don't nobody need to see your ring. Put the ring away. Put the thing away. You can take it. You bought that a pawn. You bought that at a pawn shop, dude. That's so cute. (laughs) It is. It's very cute. Hey, I worked hard for that. No, answer my question. If or no, she like she said, when when they make it to the national championship, especially because she is our fourth LSU gymnastics guest. Are you going? And are you bringing the family? Do I want to enjoy this? Then no, I'm not bringing my entire family. They. Your family loves gymnastics. You're leaving them at home, bro. You you realize he got a baby, my, bro. My yeah, like I have a. a well, you can leave the baby. I, I I more meant your gymnast daughter and your wife who I would who I, gymnastics. Absolutely, if it worked out, I would definitely. All right, so Aaliyah, make it happen and family. make him make him follow up with this. Hey, right, I'm gonna hold you to that. We'll see you he, there. No, y'all didn't hear that one little ambiance, that little nuance. He just copped out. He said, "If it works out." So that means uh, always got a way out. Well, My boy yeah. is in sales now, and now he's got a couple of little words he throws I'm in. I'm the dedication here. Uh, wow. He did, hey, he, hey, I'll tell you wow. what, Aaliyah. I believe that he'll do it, and I'll tell you why. He hates soccer with a passion. And our Memphis soccer guest was playing against USF in his home and his hometown because he actually lives in Tampa. And he went and watched her play soccer with as much as he hates it, just to support her. He loves gymnastics. So if he's willing to go do soccer, I know he'll go to gymnastics that he loves. And let, let me tell you this too. Memphis baseball plays in the conference tournament every year, about 30 minutes from where I live. And I have yet to go see them play, <laughs> but I did go see soccer. 
at South Florida. That's because she challenged you just like Aaliyah did. So now you're on the spot again. All right. Well, close this thing, Daniel, because she's got school tomorrow, bro. School? I mean, she's probably three reins deep. She's good. <laughs> she's wired. All right. My question for you before before he closes this thing down, are you going to be at soccer tomorrow night? Am I? Ooh, I actually did hear about that. I might make an appearance at soccer. Like you better. Big, big I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be there. That way I can officially meet you because I'm meeting Kaya there. That's why I figured you might be going. She's going to the soccer game. Okay. All right. Y'all get free pizza, students. I need to somehow find the fountain of youth and lose 20 years so I could get some free pizza. Let's go. Well, maybe maybe I can pull a little little under the under the table action for your slice of pizza. <laughs> there we go. There we go. A little, a little cheese pizza for Jim. <laughs> All right, Aaliyah, anything you want to plug or promote before you get out of here? Oh, not a specific brand. I'd probably, probably just say – if you guys haven't already, you probably could just go to LSU Gold and watch The Climb, which kind of just takes you through a series of how our season went starting from August all the way up until May, ooh, April. Just an in-depth, behind-the-scenes version. It's a great watch. So, so is there going to be a Climb Part 2? I believe so. I believe we got ready. Right natty edition. Spoiler natty alert. Edition. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you heard it here first. Breaking news. There will be a Climb too. Miley Cyrus, watch out. I mean, you don't know nothing about the climate until you've seen LSU gymnastics. Absolutely. All right, I'll help you out a little bit. Go on over to Instagram, at Aaliyah Finn, and you can see what Aaliyah's doing on a Wednesday. Maybe she's recording a podcast. Or you might see her making her breakfast, having her rainstorms, just doing it all. Just just loving life. I'm looking or, it up right now, Daniel. You, hey, you, you'll be... You'll be surprised how many rain promotions are on that page. I was shocked. But anyhow, if you want to follow LSU Gymnastics, go to Instagram at LSU Gym, and I promise you, you won't be disappointed because you're going to be up to date with when the climb two is. And their videos doing. in general, their high videos yeah. in general right. have changed. For real. But even better, if you follow it now, you'll get really the start of the special season leading up to a national championship. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Aaliyah, thanks for joining us. We wish you nothing but the best. Please come back and talk to us about a national championship. We'd love to have yes. you. Thank you so much for having me. Really enjoyed my time. Absolutely. That is Aaliyah Finnegan, everybody. We are going to take a quick break. We're going to plug our sponsors when we come back. we got to talk NFL football because it's kicking off tomorrow. <laughs> 